Single path. Don't know. What's wrong with you just saying? Just made it up. It's beautiful. Or was it like, yeah, yeah, it's like, because you have this structure that you can test over and over again and it's like really fucking robust. You can't start halfway through now. And it's going to make no, no, it's going to make no sense. In that. Okay, folks, uh, this is going to be episode three of what we call filler, uh, and this basically exists as twenty minutes to half an hour segment of us just talking about nothing in particular. Uh, we really hope you enjoy the slice of nothing in particular. Okay, so I realize that the the microphone is rather barret biased in my direction. I'll just move it into a more central position so we pick up everybody. That's not central enough. That's pretty good. I'm sorry, you, you forgot yeah. to adjust the microphone further. Um, yeah, I know, of course I did. Fuck you, fuck. Uh, I gotta be in this shit, man. And are you guys smoking out here? What are you doing? What, what, no, what, man? What, what, Dude, what? what are you on about? Just keep what? talking. Um, Don't bring fire into this. Um, basically, I found it with Versus Reality. Yeah, that's like a really good model and it fucking worked. And I got a subscriber for each one of those videos. Mm -hmm. And what that said to me was that was a formula. That wasn't far from perfect, given how much I understand I about podcasting. But was really a cut above the rest of the kind of things I do with regard to its organization and the way it was presented and delivered. And turning that into like a an essay would allow me to like deliver those points, like and have the have the ability to flesh them out. Mm -hmm. So it would get to the point where I wouldn't read from a pre-prepared statement because that feels forced, as well as sounds forced. I would literally write it and Full read it and, and, and perform it so many times to the point where I got it down to like a T. guidelines. And yeah, and, and literally do it until I learned the entire thing off by heart and then just deliver it. And the next one I do, I mean, the, the music versus reality was such an important podcast because it was the first time I ever combined music. Is there a combined uh, film, like video in my podcast? Yeah. Uh, did I show you that one? Eh? I think you did, yeah. And that was like huge. I mean, I think it's at about forty views. It's been out for about a week and a half, which is the one with Jimi Hendrix playing. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's Archie Monkeys yeah. playing. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that's I, you. <laughs> you agreed. <laughs> no, Lewis, that was a test. <laughs> I think you'll find the Arctic Monkeys were performing that popular song. I bet you look good on said dance floor. I bet you look good on the radio. You have a face for the radio. Do you get it? No, I bet you look good on the radio. Can't what? see you on the radio. That's not. Oh. <laughs> you had to oh, give it away, Sean. Yeah. yeah. No. Mm, the, yeah. Just the two of us. We can make it if we die. Ah, see, the see, that's two smart. Of us. That's smart thinking. That's smart knowledge. It's good knowledge, as opposed to that bad knowledge we keep hearing all so much about. Like, what's what is your favorite kind of video on, say, YouTube to, to watch or listen to? Well, sorry, I don't understand it's the question. Always come to rape. serious <laughs> answers only. I don't understand the question. What's your favorite rape. type of it? <laughs> <laughs> Seek professional help. I'd say do oh. that weird shit. Of yeah, games or fails. Fails. People like fails. People hurting themselves. People like people hurting themselves. Yeah, I like, I mean, I like hurting people. But yeah, yeah, what do you think? Why do you think that is? Like, why do you think people enjoy seeing other people? In why pain? do people enjoy thousands of years ago p watching people get eaten by lions in the Colosseum? We'll never know. And killing each other. Yeah, like it's just mental. It's just that's humans for you. I think there's an element of it that like people enjoy seeing the extremes of human nature, nature and the human condition, like. Like or how like small and yeah. uh, uh, like insignificant we yeah. are. Yeah, I mean, it explains like I think I've said this on one of my podcasts before. It explains why um, romance films and books and Can you horror hurt? films and books like violence and love uh, are two extremes of human <laughs> nature of the human condition. Mm. And I think people like the. That's extremes. because they're the exact opposites. The yin and yang. Yeah, love but they're both hate. manifestations of the same thing, which is With an emotion. extreme in one direction or the other. Okay, as well. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the opposites. Yeah, but the pain element. But they're also the same. The pain <laughs> element's <laughs> fucked up because it's My combined. Mind, it <laughs> the pain element's fucked up because it's combined <laughs> with. Did you throw a small piece of paper at me? No. Some of it. <laughs> it's combined no. with comedy. Well, it's combined with, with humor. So you're combining pain with humor. Mm. 
and then you, if you love those videos, then how you is it love, funny when someone snaps? You love an ankle? observing how is it someone else combining pain with humor, so it's like a trifecta of sin. It's a trifecta. <laughs> trifecta. Remember watching a reference from Pineapple Express for those of you in the audience still with us. Uh, All right. I remember watching a war film and I didn't blink at any of the carnage until like a dog got shot. I was like, oh my god, they killed the dog, yeah. sick bastard. I was like, wait, that's <laughs> people else yeah. face me, if you know what I mean. The thing that Carl Pilkerton says famously is like, people are battering everyone else, other people, no one bats an eyelid. Someone hits a monkey and he goes, you thumped the monkey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's such a genius observation. It's like stating the fucking painfully obvious. Yeah, but it's crazy. People it's often, I think, overthink things, so they overlook the obvious. I think it's part of like conditioning, like you're conditioned to to accept. overthink things. And I think people, I do it. And I accept think people overthink too. things. Yeah, and accept things because they're afraid of being wrong, so they want to like really make sure they're right. Yeah, and they do all that without actually taking notice of the thing that's just right in front of them. You know what I mean? It's like cock. More like that. that why, is it all, why is it? Why do you always do this? Why does it always revert back to your penis for it? Because yes. it's so big. It's not. It's hot. <sighs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm I ashamed. have psychological problems. <laughs> What's that thing that have you guys seen Liar Liar? Yeah. And Jim Carrey. It's like, um, nah, maybe just everyone's being so nice to you because your boobs are so big. I mean, they look delicious. I mean, I want to squeeze them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mwah, mwah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mwah, 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 mwah. That is a fucking sick film. In That's an amazing ways. film, man. Yeah. It's such a good like, film. No, like, no, I, I, I just gained eternal respect for Jim Carrey when, in Me, Myself and Irene, he is quickly changing between Hank and himself. Yeah. And he's fighting. basically fighting yeah. himself in the car. It's like, people are like, oh, it's just, he just does like... Over the top, at least. he's an over actor. Wait, what else is that's that in though? Yeah. There's another film where he fights himself. I'm pretty sure there's another film where he fights himself. He fights mm. himself. Yeah. What about in Ace Ventura when he's trying to get out of the mechanical rhino? It's <laughs> oh, one of yeah. the sickest scenes in it's film history. Like gives birth to himself. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's worse than the, the, kids, the sex the scene. Just and watch it, it is worse than the sex scene and Enemy at the Gates. Possibly one of the most awkward and weird sex scenes in film history. That's you know crazy. when Rachel no, Weisz is awkward. just getting fucked by Jude Law and it's just here. What do you know? <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Um, super bad. Is it in the middle? Do you know like super bad? Wait, do you know super everyone else as well. Everyone else. Is yeah, like and, and it's just oh, and it's just the kind of pained expression on her face is just fucked here. Up. Who's that guy? Who's that guy in um, in super bad? The one that's the the guy with the glasses and that. And he gets uh, McLovin, whatever, whatever his name is, the character. Yeah. Yeah. His um, the actor had to get his mum. The guy's know, eternally known as McLovin. Well, the <laughs> guy had to the guy had to um, get his mum to be present on the set when they were doing the sex scene because he was seventeen and underage. That's crazy. So how awkward would that be? It's in just a, worse. His mum has to watch it now. In yeah. a film saturated with in violence. In front of her. Now. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Not violence, sex. I suppose you'd probably see the. Well, the scene when he gets gypped. It's pretty fucking brutal. Well, you super bad. Yeah, super bad's the film where he becomes a superhero. That's kick ass. That's kick ass. Wait, yeah. you don't get stabbed. Wait, in yeah, bad. I was thinking there's no knives in super bad. Oh shit, those films. The one are with the guy that all weirdly all similar all he, all in my mind keeps for doing some reason. It's like word association. I just associate the that, them. With the guy with Ruben. No, the guy where all he keeps doing is drawing cocks, and you and Ruben have, they sat in my room for one day, like just drawing loads of different dicks, explaining stuff. Because I was trying to explain my phimosis to you. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, he was, was just like, like nah, is it like this? And you're like, it's more like this. And you started drawing something like, nah, nah, but what about this? And like, yeah. Nah, you got to curve it off like Ruben this. just continued to draw sake. cocks yeah. on his fucking jotter. And he then told me apparently he forgot to rip those pages out. Yep, and handed it in. It was a homework job. Really? Yep. He actually handed it in. I don't think I got ever like told. I think someone just thought it was something wrong with me. So. I tell you that time, but Mr. I was trying, I was trying you to handed it in. You, it was your homework job. Yeah, and I, maybe it was just people were thinking I was trying to make sense of my own circumstances. <laughs> You weren't in Mr. Hendry's mouth. It was really, you were trying to potentially make sense of my fourth coming found on my job. What did you find on your job? Um, I think Adam asked me or something, like, how do fat people have sex or something like that? Like, if they, phys <laughs> if they physically can't <laughs> reach. Sounds like the kind of thing Adam would ask. I was like, I don't know, like this. So I drew a diagram. Diagram. <laughs> 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 a fat man just There's something lying about that. on the ground, 
trampoline set up to yeah. his left and a woman bouncing in the air. Yeah. And, and they yes. attempted to meet with well, centrifugal force in the middle. It gets, it gets, it gets much better. I forgot about that diagram. A couple of weeks later, I asked Mr. Hendry for help. Yeah, no problem, son. Flips to the back of my jaw. <laughs> Uh, opens the first page and <laughs> <Is that> boom. <laughs> yes. What was there like picture pictographic tits and shit? Yes. That oh my god. Uh, no, it's <laughs> not not as embarrassing as the time I went into Kex with um, a DVD, and I had previously years before was selling this DVD. It's got it porno in it. And <laughs> what the fuck? It's right. got porno in it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I had. <laughs> basically left I double stacked the CDs because you know when you're 17 you try and hide your porn I thought my dad will never look in uh, an old BBC DVD of the BBC's 2006 series Warriors where they <laughs> cover such notable historical figures as Genghis Khan Alexander the Great and Napoleon Bonaparte and the girl that served me at the counter who was not altogether unattractive at all <laughs> opens this plastic case uh, and takes the top CD out and from behind it slides a DVD entitled Lesby Friends <laughs> uh, complimentary additional Wait, how old were you? I don't know, about 17, 18 oh, okay. complimentary with the popular Loaded magazine <laughs> and uh, man like I used to, when I was living at, speaking of like really fucked up porn, appearing in the most unlikely of places, the the shop, the corner shop next to where I used to stay at, at Moat House in Slateford, it was this guy, he was the quietest guy ever, and if you like spoke too loudly in his shop, he would give you a dirty look, yeah, <laughs> and it was just boring shit, just tinned food and just crisp. Juices, the most normal shit. Yeah, thanks, man. But this guy had. Did he feel real important? The most. <laughs> just to describe his magazine stack. Like, oh yeah. Oh my god! Like it was like ten percent, you know, uh, OK magazine, Radio Times, and just the top three shelves. One shelf of that on the bottom, all your newspapers, yeah. <laughs> like in your shop, then the top three shelves of just the most lascivious filth <laughs> I have ever seen. More porn than I've ever seen in a corner shop in my life. More porn than you've ever seen, like more disgusting porn you've ever seen on the net? Or no, I've seen way more disgusting shit on the net. When you've watched like quadriplegic dwarf porn at four o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, you have, you have, you you have the mark of keen upon your soul. Like, it's never going to go back. It's like, when you close your eyes for the fucking months that follow, and that's all If I have a seen. question to ask, who can I ask? It's like, you can ask Jesus. Yeah, well, I don't want to ask Jesus, or how do I find midget porn on Google? Well, yeah, but that's the... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem. Uh, that, I think that's the breakdown of the social order within well, our society. The In the late 90s... <laughs> that's the problem that's right there. It just runs out the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never see him for like four years, five years. In the late 90s, people ceased to ask Jesus for help and moral advice and the breakdown of our society was when people started to ask Jeeves <laughs> <laughs> it was like hey Jeeves can you tell me I mean I'm having a lot of relationship problems with my parents I'm 16 I'm from Connecticut I just wanted to know if you had any advice I mean I would ask Jesus but he's quite busy and uh, every time I call it says that the switchboard is closed for the evening please call <laughs> back between 8am and 10pm Monday to Friday excluding Sunday and where Saturday is open only till 6 p.m. and <laughs> opens at 10 a.m. So I'm a little limited in my choices here. Uh, so could you could you tell me you know how how do I solve this this uh, this domestic issue within my own family? And the search results include bestiality and uh, you know n you know nuns being it's called species into oh. erotica. Yeah, it, speciation, which I've always found to be a, a vaguely erotic word. Speciation. Yeah, which is an element of evolution. I was like, it's oh no, no, moral. that's speciation. <laughs> it's just like, ugh. <laughs> speciation just doesn't sound right. We call it interspecies erotica. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> the dick version. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, this guy had a fucking sick mm -hmm. porn collection. Student it's House 2. The Return of Big Dick Dan. Kelly. Kinky Kelly. Kinky and Kelly. Stud, and the big stud. Yeah. It's like, what? 
Where's oh, Kiki Kelly? Oh, is that Kelly? from your famous... I'm Kiki Kelly. Your Where's famous porn stud? collection. That's the big... No, I'm the big stud. That's Kiki Kelly. Yeah. What? Kinky's is a, it's a girl's name. It's like, yep, it could be a boy's name too. Cha! <laughs> it's like, yeah, just a fucking creepy guy. So you've started watching uh, Andromeda. Yeah. What do you think of it so far? Uh, it took me a while to get into it. Speed cop! No, I'm sorry. No, because I'm used to, like, Stargate Atlantis. And Quiet. Like I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Fuck you. you. Keep your voice down, please. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm just... I don't know. It seems a lot more cheesy than the other ones. Yeah. Well, it, it, it definitely did come out of that late 90s period of period. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you sad fuck. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a bad cheesy. Really. It just takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah. Period? Yeah. It, it's, uh, not, it's not as bloody. Bloody. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It's a bit more jolly to me. A bit more jolly, not as moody. <laughs> moody. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm like... Da, the fuck, don't forget. Ten episodes or something. Yeah. So like the first series. It's like, mark down on your calendar which time of the month your girlfriend will be on her period, and then that week let her win all the arguments. <laughs> Free man. <laughs> no, no bad blood, no water under the bridge. No shit in the ace. No. <laughs> I mean, there is a watermark on relationships. After about two years, the sex tends to dry up. <laughs> is that supposed to be a pun? Huh? Yes, I think it is. It's supposed to be a what? Is that supposed to be a pun? A pun? Yeah. Maybe. A pun. Like punch her in the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> a pun? As in, I'm gonna punch you in the fucking face. <laughs> oh, man. No, like, I mean, Andromeda, it came out like in the late 90s when things were kinda... Uh, Kinky. Could you please control your flatulence? Oh, no, man. Just while we're recording. Not at all. Uh, when things were kinda over my room, the my top. Rules. Yeah, Almost cartoony, dramatic. yeah. Like life and death, or what does it say? The top. No, I live. have no idea. It's one of those fucking live generic. What's the word? T-shirts. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you know, you know, like state life. champions, Milwaukee, nineteen seventy-six, being worn by a four hundred pound transvestite <laughs> from Luton. <laughs> you know those bad. fucking T-shirts. Saw one of my t shirts that I got from Primark being so <laughs> worn by some Jakey on the Perry McC- uh, Jerry McHale show. That's when you know you have to burn yeah. your shit. I burnt my shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know it's bad when you see it on a Ugandan. Ugandan? Yeah. God's <laughs> sake, man. You know, like, <laughs> for only £4 a month, it's like, I'm not giving that guy shit, he's got a better fucking t shirt than I have. <laughs> And it's like you see Sean like in um, Ace Ventura just burning his stuff in the bin while he's showering in the uh, bathroom crying so he's <laughs> got a cold shower and he's just got like his arms crossed round his knees that are brought right up to the chest and he's just rocking back and forward and it's like if you have you or a friend of yours transmitted a sexually transmitted disease in the past <laughs> what the, the worst and then advert the guy just turns <laughs> really transmitted <laughs> a sexually transmitted <laughs> disease. disease see what I did there sex <laughs> sexual sex. sexy sexy I'm feeling sexy, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the what, what, peep what show. is this advertising <laughs> don't you know when I've not seen that yeah. in peep show when he's sitting there and she goes yeah I've got STD so I think you might want to get checked out and he's just going STD huh Sexually transmitted disease. Sexually transmitted. Sexually. <laughs> Sex. Sexual. I'm feeling sexy. <laughs> and just like, wait, what were you talking about? I need to start watching people. Oh, it's on fucking Netflix. hilarious. It's quite a fucking yeah. good show. All like, I think it's nine seasons, eight, nine seasons on people. Yeah. Mm. It's very well done though, very well written. Yeah, it is a very well written show. It's a very dry comedy, it's like blue, blue mm. jokes. It's like, the, I don't know, it's half the jokes, I didn't even realise they were jokes to begin with, and when you start watching it over, you're like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. yeah it's good. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you, I know you answer a bit honestly, because you're a mate, but is the bottom half of me on fire? <laughs> <laughs> it's a funeral. It's just taking crystal meth at a funeral. Oh. Taking crystal meth at a funeral, fucking hell. <laughs> you don't get much crystal meth in this part of the world. I get a crystal meth all the time. All the time, mate. Thanks all for, day, er, day, er, damn day. I'm just joking, I don't actually. Don't ask me for it. This all is purely day, fiction, or damn day. <laughs> what? We're diluted. Hmm? Diluted to what? What are we diluted to? What's happening? Where am I? Who's this? You're not my daddy! 
<laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that, son. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Obama, my dad said that you were spying on people. <laughs> He's not your dad. <laughs> no. It's just Obama next to like an infant kid. The kid's just like, I heard you were spying on us. And he's like, no, my dad said you were spying on us. He's like, ha <laughs> He's not your dad. <laughs> that guy's really turned out to be a bit of a cunt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I really think people don't want to admit to it because he is so much more likable than Bush was. You know, anything's better than Bush, but then again, it's just... America to be like, fair, at least America Bush was hoping. straight about being no, a cop. See what Seth MacFarlane said, though? Seth MacFarlane said, like, through those eight years where Bush was in the presidency, yeah. right, he fucked up so much in eight years Then, if President Obama was going to come along and fix it, it would take at least f- f- 16 years, double the amount of time to fix it, because it's always easier to break than it is to fix. Yeah. So... It's kind of true what they said. Everyone just thought that Obama was going to come in and just solve everything just all at once because he was a new first black president Kept ever. Com- campaigning but for change, yeah. Never mentioned what that change was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's fucking smart campaign. Well, that's yeah. That's one on one in campaigning. Because it's more shit than the other right? guy. And then when you get in office, what do you say? It's like, what are you going to do? I'm already the president. I'll see you in four years. Yeah. And then I'll promise more shit than the other guy. Then and all the fucking decisions you've come to in your mind will be easily overwritten by the endless tirade of bullshit that the other guy's going to come out with especially if that guy is a magic pants wearing Mormon (laughs) you know whose family made their money in the car industry but voted to abandon General Motors like what a cunt but you know it was like that. There was that line from yeah, Bill Maher. already Mar- made enough money. Is that why they went to abandon? Yeah, Bill Maher had a line about Mitt Romney. He said, "If Mitt Romney could get one more vote as a black woman, he yeah. would cut his dick off and get a weave so fast." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's <laughs> like, yeah. Fuck that. Oh, do you want to suck him off? No, no, no. It always comes to this, man. You just can't help yourself. It always just comes just back to this, sorry. Granddad. I'm just feeling. <laughs> Fisky. You're ugly Fisky. and no one will love you. How shit is Tiny Tim's new Mom. track? <laughs> Trampoline. <laughs> that guy's really let himself down. Trampoline's just it's a, such an awful song. It's fucking, it's one of the worst songs I've ever heard. I just don't understand it. The first time I watched the video, I was like, when is it it's going to break into it? Something's going to happen. I'm waiting for it. I Something's going to happen. He's on the bounce back, though. Huh? He's here on. he's on the bounce back, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. I, it's actually taken me a few moments to absorb the terrible nature of that joke. You're welcome. And it's inherent <laughs> genius. <laughs> 50 pound. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to start charging for this shit. No, but seriously, what were we saying? He rhymes trampoline with what? Oh, he rhymes trampoline with tangerine. <laughs> it's fucking abysmal. I just don't get what, what's going on. Why do so many people like it? I don't. Do people really like yeah, it? Yeah, people like it. It's a fucking bullshit It was song. in the charts for some time. I mean, it's just weird. I don't know, probably a few million. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. juice. Yeah. And then look at Gangnam Style. Half of it's in, uh, more than half of it's in another language. Only a bit people really understand. Oh, I can't understand. Yeah, I know, but it's in Hey Sexy Lady. Hey Sexy Lady, yeah. Hey Sexy Lady. I'm a fucking note. Fuck. I tried to w- listen to that no, as little but as gentlemen, possible. But sorry, you can't Gentleman's such a good one. Gentleman's a good song. You can't escape Gangnam Style, and you can't escape the X Factor, and you can't escape any of it, right? Yeah. I don't watch the X Factor, yet I see the X Factor everywhere. That's Uber advertising. Even if you don't want to watch this bullshit, you're gonna well, watch this. Bullshit. Bullshit. At least, yeah. at least four or and five, wait, at least four or five days in the shop. At least four or five days every single week in the paper, there'll be something about the X Factor or ridiculous. about the ex judges. So yeah. they keep going on about Talisa, the ex judge yeah. factor. Do you know how they talk Come about on, the military industrial mm. complex? Yeah. I'm convinced that there are loads and loads of these complexes, complexes. Just and connections they, they, like, between people. Yeah, like some people say there's a f- the pharmaceutical industrial complex whereby the pharmaceutical companies also have a stake in the food companies. So this is this is one of the theories anyway. Um, and that they create shit in the food that they don't do it, well they probably do it liver, but they know that one of the side effects is that you might have allergies cropping up because all the food is just processed. Yeah. And then when the allergies crop up they create medicines that they sell to people to yeah. deal with the allergies. Hmm. Yeah. Right. It's like, it's like I sometimes feel that like there's a press, like a news 
media industrial complex, a media industrial complex would be quite a good one um, to call it, whereby you fund these shows in the f and say make this as popular for popularity's sake as possible, possible yeah. then we can sell newspapers about it and have magazines while it's running about it and it's like just a clusterfuck, just continual, continual. You send, you sell the fucking dominoes while X Factor is on. Yeah. The only thing I like about X Factor is dominoes because they sell like pizza. The that pharmaceutical I company, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies um, will control exactly what stuff, what chemicals, and that we're allowed to use legally or not legally. Yeah. Like here, which all comes down to plants as well. Like, it's like every plant should be legal for the sake of that. It's on this planet. Well, if you so want, you know, here heard something about the vaporizers and they're trying to do. Trying to like uh, legislize the medical, yeah, the liquid or something is a medical use. So only like big pharma and uh, only yeah, the big pharma will be able to it. afford to jump through yeah. the medical expenses. And then they'll just charge it the exact same price as fags. Have, have you heard about Have you heard about Nestle? No. Nestle. One of the CEOs of Nestle came out about a month ago. Came in the closet. <laughs> yeah, I was very <laughs> thinking that. Like, <laughs> he came out about a month ago, and uh, he's now my boyfriend. Do you know what he said? He said, um, basically, Nestle are saying that water is a tradable commodity and that water should not be free the and fuck, that, they, that, that they should have the ability to buy up portions of the world's water reserves and sell them that's a renewable fucking energy yeah they're saying it's a food stuff it's uh it's a food stuff it's a tradable uh food stuff and y you do not have a human right to water have you not seen the other How thing? How fucked up is but that? It's like it's like a liter and a half of uh, Coke. It's ninety nine cent in the states, and then it's like a two, a three liter bottle. Sorry, it's like uh, one fifty in the states or something like that. But a bottle of water, a big two liter bottle of water, will be like two ninety nine. It's like, can anyone explain this shit? Yeah, and currently the second most expensive place to live. Yeah, huh? second most expensive place to live. What Britain? It's Britain. Yeah. In the world? Probably. Probably. <laughs> The second most expensive <laughs> place in the world to live is Britain, probably. Probably. That's a definite probable fact, probably. <laughs> <laughs> that is a definite 100% provable, probable, probable fact. fact. <laughs> if I could prove it right now, I would, but then it would be probable enough to prove if it. If I could so prove it right now, I would, but I don't necessarily have proof. Well, yeah, well, proof. here, it worked for Jesus. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how good that energy carry poster is as a poster. Oh, that's nah, a sellable That one's poster. better, mate. Do you know why? As a dragon. You've had that poster for fucking as long as I've known you. It's crazy, man. I love that poster. Ah, shit, you've had that poster for as long as I've fucking known you. And these ones. I love that bloody check up there as well. For yeah, I'm taking the face down and Dara. Oh, well. yeah. So leave it out, okay? Punch the wall. Funny Where the fuck is Dara? Dara's gone there from the wall. Where is he, though? People thought it was freaky, right? Uh, it was getting a bit creepy. It'd been up there for years. <laughs> why would you take it down? It's why would you take it down? Why, why would you take it down? this? Yeah, people were getting fucked out. Fucking There's still a fucking pencil in your sister's wall. Yeah, yeah. In the no, nail. There's a nail and used to be a Kit Kat through it. Yeah, and we had a Kit Kat through it for like two years. Man. Yeah. To be fair, fair I like this room, but this room has never mm. quite had the character. Yeah, it's good the character of room, your old yeah. room. It had a good character in that room, eh? I think it's because it's like a small room. Wasn't so everyone's closer together, and she. Yeah, it wasn't in that room where I dropped the sausages through the hole yeah. in the ceiling. What the fuck? Like when we were having the construction thing done downstairs in the kitchen, there was like a wee gap in the in the cupboard of that small room, and I went that the hole went directly <laughs> down to the kitchen for some reason, right? It was like that was a place where it would stop. So one day when mum was downstairs cooking, <laughs> and I'd right? been the test because yeah. I bought like a big pack of cocktail the sausages. The small <laughs> oh sausages. It just kept peeping one through. Oh minutes. my god! And eventually, a third or fourth sausage down. Mum's just like, "Where the fuck do these keep coming from?" <laughs> the worst sausages. Thing, yeah. The worst thing you could possibly <laughs> put through the roof of a Muslim household. Pork. You better well, yeah. <laughs> The white boys are within the walls. They are <laughs> raining pork upon you us. Might, you might as well just put fucking bacon and then pour alcohol down the hole as well. I was young, okay. Oh my god. No, it's funny. It's oh fun. my god. They knew it was me. They found it funny, didn't they? Yeah, Do you ever think that sometimes your mum wishes you had brown friends? Sometimes she <laughs> wonders, yeah, what would life be like if... Okay, I'm as brown as it gets. Do you think it's my other mum? My alternative... For a white dude. Yeah, my other... <laughs> another non-fact. This is actually right now, there's another mum in an alternative universe, a white mother, Parveen, who's looking after her white boy, Farouk, who's very scared about all these niggers he keeps bringing out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good TV. <laughs>
No, he's not seen no, alternate any. universe where your mum's just like, or sorry, like where the white Uncle Umjid is just like, I don't really like all these these Asian boys and their like frivolous ways. Just to say though, we're getting a thirty-minute mark. Yeah. <laughs> Are we actually? Yeah. See, this is see, this is what we should have done initially. Just talk about nothing in particular and just suggest things to talk about and ask what each other feel about. It, and I like that. Well, do you want to pause on that? Because so um, we actually made it. Yeah, we're about to uh, cut off. Uh, we're Sign about to out. go and uh, we'll read some comic books that don't involve cannabis at all. The train so is at the station. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Ring. Love you. Suck a dick. Bye.